Okay, so now we've got our cleaned up image. I'm going to um, show you how you can extract the black from the background without using the magic wand, which is what most people would use. First of all, I'm going to do it what I think is the wrong way and show you what the effect of that looks like just so that you can understand why I'm doing it the way I think is best. So I'm just going to flatten this image and then what most people would do at this point if they wanted to get the black um, selected is that they would use a magic wand and they would take it out of contiguous mode and they would click in the white and it would select all the white and then we go to select inverse shift command i that's inversed the selection so that you've got the black selected and then you might do um, something like you might hit command j on the keyboard and copy that onto onto the black onto layer one now if i take this away you can see that we've got nasty white edges and everything and I see students do this a lot whenever you see this horrible white edge you know that the magic wand has been used and it never really looks any good so we're not going to do that way I mean even if you were to um, select this now you hold command and click on layer one and then we were to um, make a new layer and let's pick a sort of light pink so you can see and go edit fill fill with the foreground color and command D deselects you might think okay well that looks better um, my issue is we're getting none of the subtlety of our pen strokes we're getting solid pink or nothing um, and quite often you'll get not very nice edges Certainly if you were using kind of brush marks or pencil, um, none of that would translate. You just literally get, because a magic wand selects either, it selects 0% or 100%, so you're just going to get this really, really solid colour, which in this instance I don't think looks all that great. So I'm going to just um, get these two and delete them. And we're back to our background layer. Now you can see these sort of subtleties in here of pen marks, slight transparency, still looks like a felt tip pen, which we kind of lost. So I'm going to show you the method that I would always use, and that is using channels. If you, if you click here, you'll see channels palette. If you can't find it, if it's not in your window anywhere, just go up to window and then make sure channels is checked. So just to help you understand what we're looking at, um, if you know your colour theory, you know that um, white light is made up out of red, green and blue. So when you get a prism and you split up white light, you get a rainbow. Um, of red, green and blue. So the RGB channel is what's called the composite channel and that is um, all the red, green and blue put together so that we're looking at the luminance or the, or the lightness of this image. So what happens is if I hold command on the keyboard and hover over RGB you'll see that I get a little selection symbol with a little dotted square. That means when I click on this I'm going to make a selection. So let's do that now. And what that's done is it's selected all the white in the image. But it's not doing the same thing as the magic wand is. It's doing it seeing luminance, seeing subtlety. It doesn't look like it, but it's seeing all of this stuff. It'll only show you the 50% uh, the boundary. It doesn't, don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you. All of this subtle marks are selected. We don't want to select all the white, we want to select all the black. So in the same way that we did before, I'm going to go up to select inverse. That's flipped the selection around. And I'm going to make a new layer. And with my pink, I'm going to go to edit, fill, foreground colour. Or on the keyboard, alt, delete, fills with the foreground colour. 
Then I'm going to hit Command D for deselect. Command D. So now if I switch my background layer off, we have got a much nicer edge. We've got all the subtlety in here of our pen strokes. Everything that was on that paper, even these light marks, are lifted off and we're on a separate layer. I'm going to keep this background layer, but I'm going to add a new layer in between by clicking on this button. And I'm going to fill that with white so I get a new background. Because if you see, if I don't do that, what you'll see is there's a tiny bit of show through from that black. You can see it around the edges. So on this layer two, I want to fill it with the background color, which is white. I can do that by um, on the keyboard Command Delete. Let's fill with the background color Command Delete on the keyboard. So, what was a black and white image is now a pink image. If I make layer one active, and I can use my um, lasso tool, and I can just throw a lasso around this teapot, teapot person, and I'm going to go to layer, new, via cut or shift command J. You will see now in the layers palette the teapot person has been chopped up onto a new layer. So if I hit V, go to move and um, it should have auto select on. I can just move them around. If I wanted him to be a different colour, there's a number of ways I can do this. I can select him at any point because he's on a separate layer. The same way that we used with the RGB channel, I hold down Command on the keyboard and I click on layer 3 and I get a selection. So then I could make a new layer. I would always make a new layer if I'm going to recolour it because I don't want a little fringy halo of different colour. Um, let's make him blue. And again, Alt Delete on the keyboard and Command D to deselect. And I'm going to throw that layer three away. And now I have turned him blue. And you'll see if we move him over that he's nice and opaque. I don't get any show through. I don't get any nasty white lines. I have all the subtlety of my pen. You can see if I zoom right in here. The areas that weren't 100% black are just a tiny bit transparent. If I want this to be um, more as if it was printed with inks or um, almost as if it was an acetate, I can change this into multiply. And that does this sort of risograph type effect like that. If I want this just a little bit opaque, what I would do probably is, um, here's my teapot man layer 4. I'll duplicate that by pulling it down onto there and I'll change this back to normal. That's 100% opaque but I'm just going to pull the opacity down just a little bit. So you can see the difference now. I've got this on 62% opacity. If I take that away and we're just seeing layer 4 which is 100% but in multiply mode I'm getting this kind of you know, overprint effect. I can bring back a little bit of opacity if I want to, or less, and I can play with that as I move the sliders up and down. If I'm happy with how he looks, what I would probably do is select both of these layers by holding Shift and clicking on both of them like that, and on the keyboard Command G, or here, a uh, new group from layers. And uh, let's call him Teapot. So now we have this Teapot, Teapot Man. And with Auto Select um, Group as opposed to Layer, I've got it to set to Group so that when I Auto Select, I'm not just selecting the layers within here, I'm selecting the whole group.
and moving the whole group around. If I had this set to layer and I grabbed one, I would just be grabbing layer four and moving that, which I don't want at this point. So I'm just going to leave it set to group. We can position him wherever we want. If we were decided we want him to be bigger, um, Command T or Edit Free Transform, Command T. So we can do what we want with him. You'll see in this layer palette with the group, I've got this little arrow which I can twirl up or twirl down to see the layers in that group. Now I'm going to chop some more stuff out of, of layer one and show you a slightly different method for colouring artwork. So let's go back to my lasso tool and let's get this kind of steam train beast thing. Just throw a line around that. I'm going to deselect de this to show you something. If I went around here and then I accidentally did that, so I've missed a bit of the selection, and I need to add a bit here, I can just hold down Shift, and you'll notice that I get a plus where my cursor is. That means I'm going to add to the selection. I, I keep Shift held down, and I draw in the bit that I missed making sure I don't get the weird sock person next to him. So that's added to the selection. If I accidentally got the sock person in and I wanted to get rid of him, I could hold down Alt on the keyboard and that gives me a minus so I can subtract from this selection, like so. So Shift adds Alt subtracts. Now that I've got that selected, again Command J on the keyboard or Shift Command J on the keyboard, Command J will be layer via copy, new layer via copy. Like that. If I switch layer 1 off, you'll see that now we just have layer 5, which I'm going to double click on and call it Steam train, and obviously I can move him and reposition him wherever I want. At the moment, he's underneath Teapot Man. If I wanted to move him on top, I can pull him up, making sure that I don't put him into that group. But I go right up, and now he's on top of. But I think we'll leave him underneath. Now, if I want to change the colour of him, I could do the same as we did with the Teapot Man, or I can do a different thing which I'm going to show you now, which is to add a solid colour adjustment layer which we will clip down onto this layer. So let's pick a different colour to start off with. Let's pick um, kind of orangey colour colour. In this adjustment layers, I'm going to choose the first one, solid colour. And you'll see that I get this pick a colour come up and the whole thing's gone solid. And obviously we've just got this big colour fill. If I want to change the colour at any point, I just double click on that and change it to wherever we want. We need to clip it down onto the steam train so that it's only going to be affecting steam train. And if I hold Alt on the keyboard, you'll see that I and I hover in between the two layers, I get this square with a right angled arrow and I'll click on that and you'll see that now the orange is only affecting the pixels of steam train layer. So if I decide okay I'm going to move, I, I can't move him around because what I'm doing now is I'm grabbing colour fill one and that's getting moved. So again I'm going to put these into a group and I'm going to go to group, new group from layers and call it train And now, because I've got auto select group on, they can get moved around. Um, if I decide, oh, I just hate this colour now, I want to change it. What's great about this is rather than making selections and making new layers, I can just double click on this 
say, well, I have him light pink and OK that. And I can change it as much as I like. So you can see how we can quite quickly build up layers and essentially make things look like a screen print. If I wanted um, to have a white layer here that stopped me from see stop this uh, me from seeing the train, what I would probably do is go into Teapot Man and um, or above train, I would add a new layer. I might put that into the group, and in that layer. Um, I would paint with white and if you've not got white as a foreground you can but if it's at the background like it is here I can just hit X on the keyboard and it flips foreground and background so X on the keyboard flips foreground and background and with a brush I've got lots of brushes saved I'm going to use this one too big at the moment but I can I can change that by uh, hitting the square bracket the left square bracket will go down right square bracket will go up and making sure that my flow is up at 100 percent and my opacity is up at 100 percent I can just quite roughly paint that out So that when I move him, you can see maybe if I moved him here, I'd have to paint even more. I don't have to be too accurate because it doesn't matter if I if I go down a little bit, it still looks kind of screen printy and fine. So in this way, you can build up loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of different layers. Um, and you basically can create more or less a screen print but without actually having to go and get your hands dirty. This is a really 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 useful for all those people that find have a struggle to get work out of their sketchbook or to know how you might start working digitally. You notice I've not really used any brushes to make this, this is all analog work but then composed in Photoshop later. So I hope that was useful. Um, thank you very much.